Welcome back to What RT Noobs with General Disturbance. This is the M40 M43, the Tier 8 American SPG. This one's located on the attacking team on Karelia Assault, and it's under the command of Snooks. Well, Snooks has got three marks of excellence on the barrel of his M43. How do I know it's an M43? Well, the barrel doesn't extend over the front of the vehicle. If it did, that would actually make it an M40 gun motor carriage. But in fact, this is an M43, which is an M43 howitzer motor carriage instead, because it's got an eight inch howitzer, capable of 900 alpha, penetrating 52 millimeters of armor. He spotted a standard B out in the open. He's almost loaded. Gonna give it a shot. Rounds out. Well, he got 276 hit points of damage. And he's picking up loads of stun assists because that standard B is being blasted. And he's gone, so he picked up 1,167 stun assists off just one shot. That is amazing. That's very, very good indeed. Okay, got a couple of defenders here. An object travel seven version two in a Conway hiding behind the rock. Kind of makes them more difficult to hear. Over here, we've got a Rhino Sorrente behind the cap area. When you're doing this game, you're normally firing at targets hiding behind rocks, which means that basically all you can do is try and give them a bit of splash damage, maybe pick up some stun assist got uh, 16 rounds of ammunition 8 inch howitzer ammunition to play with so it's not a lot of ammunition for this vehicle in fact the uh, the M40 and the M43 both had a, a vehicle which was a T30 which was an ammo carrier which would actually carry around the ammo they were going to build 600 of them but in the end actually they changed their minds and they only built a few but that's where they would carry most of the ammunition for this vehicle rounds out well, that looks like it probably got some stun on the Conway. Still early doors in this game. Now, the advantage of going up onto the uh, horseshoe, where he is at the moment, would actually give Snooks the ability to fire at targets in both directions. If you tend to go to the south, you get... Fairly easy shots on the enemies to the north, but it's a long way to fly for the shell. But it makes it more difficult to try and hit the targets that are coming down the west side of the map to try and defend. Because, of course, it's a slightly lower trajectory trying to uh, get the shots in that direction. Okay, we've got a target to the north, an IS-3. There's an E-50M. He's almost loaded. Standard reload, 44.1 seconds. Looks got about 35, if I remember correctly. Oh, that 60 TP just nuked our, uh, was it the Tiger 2 nuked our IS-3? 60 TP, rounds out. Direct hit on his rear for 321. He gets rid of the stun straight away, realizes it's obviously big danger. If he doesn't, the IS-4 is using the wreck of our IS-3 to try and get shots on the uh, 60 TP. Meanwhile, that IS-3 just took a hell of a pasting. I think he's going to be the next target. If so, he's probably going to get splashed to death. Rounds out. Nope, didn't get him. I thought sure that that was going to be a kill. Well, I think that uh, Snooks can see something that if you can look at the minimap, you can see there's an UDES 14.5 coming in this direction. And because Snooks is looking at his minimap, he's aware and he's doing something to protect himself. And that's to get off the horseshoe as quickly as he can before that little medium turns up and ruins his day. And yes, there's the Uders up on the horseshoe. So if he'd been up there, he would have been killed by now. Oh, now that was a direct hit. And there's Uders behind him. 
So we know we've got a direct hit on, I think it was the Barras, wasn't it? So the question is, how much damage did we do to that Barras? Because they've got very thin armor, and it's more than likely he'd do a, a penetrating shot. Potentially could have ruined that Barras game with that shot. Okay, he's loaded. Going for the IS-3 again. Line shot. Oh, he got him! He got him! Nicely done. The IS-3, creature of habit, stayed up there. Whilst we were dealing with the IS-3, our, uh, our standard B killed the enemy Uders. So we're now safe to go up onto the platform here. Be careful when you go alongside rocks like that, because sometimes you can actually flip your vehicle up as you hit the rock. Um, it's happened to me a few occasions where I've actually flipped the tank, flipped the RT on its side, and that's quite embarrassing. Tiger 2 or Gorilla? Well, the Gorilla's got no armor, so if you fire around at him, you're almost certainly going to get some damage. Well, he did get some damage, 186. The guy's stunned for the next 10 seconds, so we might get some damage if the T44-100 gets him a position to do some. Standard B's going straight across the swamp towards the enemy. He was quite a good help, actually, because he got rid of the uh, Udas after he killed our Shrek. Object Travel 7. Rounds out. Looks good. Oh, 123. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. That was, um, yeah. That was kind of dangerous. <laughs> he almost flipped himself after I gave that warning as well about vehicles going up against rocks. Yeah, don't, don't do that. Okay, the object travel seven has had enough. He's, he's come down into the ramp. Made famous by Quickie Baby on uh, Assault Games because, of course, he would go to that ramp and literally spot virtually all the enemy team and kill most of them. I've heard that in Australia he's called the Flying Fetus. Well, that or Fast Fetus, that's it. <laughs> it sounds funny, doesn't it? Yeah, okay. Well, we do seem to be winning this one because there's only four enemies left. They've got a GW Tiger P as their arty. There's the Rhino Sorrente. Look around near him to get him stunned. Just waiting for the last few seconds. Oh, there's a Tiger 2 there as well. This is going to be good. Well, the Tiger 2 goes down, but we stun the Rhino Sorrente. And Snooks is picking up some stun assist. Loads of stun assist. 2,279. Remember, he has got some blind damage, so it's only showing 1,351, but there's a good chance that he did hit that Barask, in which case then he might have a lot more. The Object 704 is throwing caution to the wind now. He knows that it's almost up. He goes around, derps the Object 704 with his 152. Snooks puts a round into him, slows him down, but he still uses his first aid kit to get rid of the stun but he's being torn to shreds now and the standard beast coming up from the coup de gras and there it is and that's a victory here's the end of battle stats and that was an ace tank again for snooks in the m40 m43 well done he got a bruiser medal for getting at least five critical hits. In fact, in this one, he managed to get 12. And he got a confederate as well for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else on his team. His win eight was 3,185, which is super unicum standard. Let's have a look at the team score. Well, he didn't get the highest damage in the game, but I don't think it would have mattered if he had, actually, because I don't think he could get it after stunning uh, two of his allies when he fired at the object treble 7-2. He managed to get 2,671 hit points, which puts him a little further down the table. Better than uh, all but one of the enemy team and three of his own, so which puts him in fifth place on damage. The top scorer was the Progetto 46. He got 5,404 hit points, picked up the high caliber 
a leather slayers and a tank sniper. Oh, well done by him. His win eight, by the way, 11,982. So obviously he's a very experienced player indeed. The highest damage on the enemy team was their Gorilla 15, 4,378. So he was doing a good sniper job. And it was right for Snooks to try and hit him because obviously he needed to take that guy down if he could. And the third highest damage in the game actually went to the Cranbarn on Snooks' team, 4,018 hit points. When it came to kills, it was the Progetto. Five kills to him, three kills to the Cranbarn, two kills to the Standard B, the Gorilla, the 704 and the Brask. I'm afraid Snooks only got the one kill. It was the IS-3. It was a classy kill because he just aimed it at the same spot that he fired at the IS-3 before. He was still there, so he claimed a kill. And when it came to base XP, he's in second place. The Progetto managed to get 1,754. Snooks got 1,294. And the third place was the Cranbarn with 1,099. And those are the only three players who managed to get over 1,000 base. And very nice score by Snooks. That guy must be really, really good to get 1,754 from the Progetto. 13 shots fired. So he still had three rounds left at the end of the game. Four direct hits on the enemy, no penetrations, but he did get 15 splash. Damage of 2,671, all of it at more than 300 meters. Damage 10 of the enemy, kill 1, 2,279 hit points of stun assist off 12 stuns. He earned 52,656 credits on a premium account, got 65,000 for completing a mission, 117,656 altogether. And after ammunition resupply, still took away a profit of 93,346 credits. 1,941 XP, no multipliers because this wasn't the first game of the day that he won, so he only took that amount away. But let's have a quick look and see, did he hit that brask? Yes, he did. Look at that, 356. That was a direct hit, but for some reason, it didn't penetrate. So, uh, yeah, lucky for the Brask. He must have hit him on the tracks or something solid because uh, that shot should have actually gone straight through him and yielded a maximum hit. But uh, there you go. Sometimes you just don't get it. Here's the armor profile for the M40, M43. In fact, this is the... Uh, Yes, showing the armor profile for the M43 as such. You can see that it's got a nice bit of armor uh, right over the transmission uh, cover, uh, the front plate. It's 108 millimeters of thickness, but obviously with the angled armor there, it comes out slightly higher. The upper plate, well, it's basically th very thin armor, almost like you might say an M10, because it's only 12.7 millimeters. This is the cover that goes over the engine deck, because the engine on this vehicle is right up front whilst they put the howitzer at the back. They had to counterbalance it, so that's where the engine is. So you can see there's two ports there, or two hatches. Uh, you'll see why later. Uh, the arm is all very thin around the outside, yeah, so anything that hits this vehicle is going to pen. Look at the live model. Yeah, it's pretty vulnerable. The only part that's not vulnerable is the transmission cover. <laughs> Which is pretty amazing. So any shell that hits this thing, it's more than likely going to go through unless it hits the front. Let's have a quick look at the modules. Okay. You can see that the driver's up front on the right-hand side. The driver's mate is on the left-hand side. He's also the machine gunner. Of course, um, I think he's supposed to operate the radio, but the radio is right at the back of the vehicle, as we see here. Uh, transmissions directly up front as usual on M4s. In fact, as I said, this is actually um, uh, has the it's based on the M4A3. It has slightly wider wheels um, or bogies on either side. That's actually to carry the extra weight. Originally, the M4A3 was actually carrying or driven by the uh, the Ford V8 diesel. Uh, was it diesel? No, petrol. It was gasoline. Gasoline engine, yes. Um, so it normally had the Ford V8 in the, uh, in the M4A3. But uh, the M40, M43s, because of course the M43s were, some of them were actually built from M40s, uh, actually had the R975 Continental engine, which is the aircraft engine instead. And you can see that the engine is sitting right underneath 
the or just behind the driver and the gunner's mate, and the fuel tanks are either side to feel, uh, feed the engine uh, directly. The ammo racks are behind those on either side. We've got the uh, commander on the right hand side, the gunner on the left hand side, and both uh, um, loaders helping uh, to feed the shells into the breach. So, uh, yes, the M40, M43, they didn't build a huge number of them. They only built 311 M40s, and by the end of the war, they built eight M43s, but they actually used them in Korea as well later on. Um, yeah, so an interesting RT. Uh, they, they needed to use um, something uh, to actually carry the 8-inch howitzer, and I suppose when you've got plenty of M4s available... Yet that seems to be the, the right vehicle to actually use to carry such a big howitzer. So, a great game by Snooks in the M40, M43. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give the video a like. Do subscribe to our channel. Leave a little comment down below because it feeds the algorithm. And thank you for watching.